You see that? You see that light, right? Now is a bright green because on the f on the lower area here there is grass and that grass is quite bright so what happens is now i'm getting this unrealistic green tone in my cockpit and on this pillar so that's the reason why positioning is quite important <laughs> Alright, so I'm proper excited about this project. I've been kind of dreaming and picturing this system, I would say from day one, since I put down my VR headset. A lot of you might know that I'm coming from a VR sim racing experience. So from day one, since I've put the headset down, I've been dreaming of having an immersive setup that can reflect light uh, streams, shadows, night lamps, and all of this stuff a apart from everything else that I've kept on setting up, like the, the nets, the triple screens being set up so nicely that it feels as immersive as possible, the, the safety nets, the roll cage, everything that I've set up, the lighting system, to simulate the track um, conditions has been in my dreams for a very, very long time. And initially I was thinking, and I was talking with the wifey, uh, this was back when I've initially started setting up triple screens and I was talking with, um, with my wife about potentially doing something with Arduino boards and LED strip lights and such. She already uh, knew Arduino a bit so we were thinking about that kind of project but I've been busy I couldn't I wasn't able to to focus on that but then I started thinking about Philips Hughes and when I set up this whole car rooftop aud oddity that I've created here uh, I decided to buy two Hue play bars to mount here I did publish a video several, several months ago when I revealed my entire rooftop and cockpit setup with the triple screens and such. So uh, I did make a video and I did briefly mention the Philips Hue bars and synchronizing this with your game. However, back then there were some technical issues with um, the, and I'm, I'm going to talk about this, the Hue Sync app on, on the desktop working with HDR screens. Basically, it was breaking the HDR mode. And the only way I was able to experience the uh, light sync was for me to turn off the HDR, which I wasn't prepared to give up because I've invested quite a bit in the screens. And the number one reason why I got them was the HDR feature. So. I didn't tweak them that much. I kind of gave up the whole synchronization. I was doing my best to to j basically tweak, just manually change the, the lights, the two lights to reflect, to em emulate as much as possible what the track conditions were. But that meant that I wasn't able to feel as immersed when the track conditions were different. For example, in the dawn and dusk with the time transition really fast and, and, and such, because I wasn't seeing those ray reflections, those sun ray reflections in my cockpit at all, as well as let's say a storm or a, a rainy day on track. Yes, I could make the, the bulbs feel a bit grayish, but not emulate the entire experience as well as shadows, which is quite important. There are a few tracks where there's trees above and you go by trees and, and there's shadows casting on the car. You can see it in the game in the dashboard, but I wasn't able to replicate any of that. And important at night, uh, lights, track lights and such, I wasn't able to do any of that. So not long ago, there was this guy that 
made his lights with, um, I don't know, he made a custom bespoke setup with uh, LED lights and strip lights and all of that stuff. And and when I saw that, and he had quite a positive reaction online, he done a pretty good job at it. So I decided, well, you know what? Let me look at the Hue lights one more time. Let me see if there's anything else. Because I've when, when I was looking for the fix for the HDR, I looked online, there was nothing concrete. Let me give it another try. There was a, an update to the app. So the Hue Sync desktop software. So I've installed that, that update and all of a sudden the screen the, the screens were running properly in HDR while the lights were synchronizing. Um, I started thinking about synchronizing it. I started playing with them. And yeah, let me give you a tour of the lights. Now, when I realized that, holy crap, I can actually synchronize the lights now with HDR and it looks decent, I decided to invest in more lights. So as you probably know from previous videos, I had two Hue lights. So this is my setup. So apologies for the for the bright lights and such. So I had these two lights, this Hue over here above the chair and this other Hue. So I had these and as you can see, I had to kind of wrap them with uh, this black foam on the sides and in front because it was reflecting on the screens so i had to protect the sides now because of that what what was happening was that this area in front here was darker because of the protection thing the light would cast just somewhere in this area but not too much on the wheel and not on the dashboard so going towards the the wheel and the dashboard the light was basically dis dissipating and also this pillar that i built uh, all the way up had absolutely no light cast and shadows it was just shadowy so i previously had when i wasn't doing the the hue sync i had lamps and i've i had a lamp there and a lot, another lamp on this screen to cast nice light on this pillar and also of course on the wheel and the dash and all of that area and i have a video i'll link to that video when i've set that up but because now the sinks the hue sinks were working i decided to invest in more bulbs and this is my setup now if you don't have a roof yeah and all of this craziness here you you might not need all of this you might be okay to just have the two bars or two bulbs and you should be fine but we have the following first of all we have a hue bridge and that device is what controls absolutely all of the lights and the hue bridge connects to the white to your Wi-Fi and after it connects to, to the Wi-Fi then all of these lights connect through Wi-Fi to your um, Hue bridge and there is a mobile app which is called Hue and in this mobile app you will have various scenes that you can control which will control the lights yeah so I can change to bright which turns everything to orange or I can turn it to energize energize makes it a bit more white i can put spring blossom and creates this nice tinted look or i've created some bright days which were for static track days and such so i can control the lights in here there are basically a lot of uh, tutorials online but i'll show you later how i set this all this up so yeah the bridge connects and now i have five total lights so I have the original play bars, which are pretty good, pretty solid, pretty strong. Then I also have three bulbs, which again are very strong. So I have a bulb on top of this left screen, which casts basically light on this pillar and on the bottom cage part. So on the bottom cage part as well. Then I have a central light on top of the central monitor, which casts light on the wheel and the dash and all of this stuff, as well as the uh, the lap timer there and creates a nice light there. 
And then I have the third bulb, which is positioned kind of here. And this basically lits up the, I will call it the passenger seat area. And so if you look from this angle, passenger seat area with the flooring, with uh, an actual fire extinguisher and roll cage for the right side. So, yeah, so I needed to make sure that when, when I go over shadows or at night lights and such, that area gets properly lit in as well. So I've got the fifth one. But as I mentioned, and again, this is, this is how they're positioned. Yeah, so play, bulb, bulb, play, and then another bulb. As I mentioned, you might not need all of this. And sorry, the light is a bit off here. You might not need all of these lights. For me, because I have a roof and because I have things um, arranged in a certain way, I kind of need them to cast proper lighting. I tried with just the, the hues in the back. And one of the challenge was the fact that but the wheel and the front stuff, they weren't showing up really nicely. So I had to add the additional lights in front and such. Right, so let's jump in the rig and uh, let's, let me show you exactly how you synchronize with your game, either ACC or whatever sim racing title, it works with any type of game. Let's see how you synchronize, what software you need, how you synchronize and how you fine tune, tweak your configuration to for maximum results. I've seen some implementations where it casts a lot of colors. If you want to really simulate the light in the cockpit while on track, you don't want that. You don't want just um, Christmas tree type of uh, lights in the cabin, although that's normal. Probably that's quite immersive as well. But if you want a realistic light cast you want the, your shadows you want your um light bulbs on track you want your sun rays but you wouldn't want to cast like the red wall when you go by or that blue one or i don't know the the green the intensive green of the trees or anything like that so you i don't think that i for me at least i don't like that so let's jump in and let's see what we can do all right, so here I am in my rig. I positioned this camera so you can see the lights. Maybe you can see the third one here, but you can definitely see the front ones. And this camera will just show you what I see, what we see on stream and uh, in the cockpit. Okay, so first of all, let's make one thing clear. What is it that controls the lights? Well, th the lights are controlled by the hue bridge. The lights directly have nothing to do with the game, with your desktop or anything like that. So the lights do not get plugged anywhere in your computer through USB or anything like that. They are plugged into a power outlet and that's it. Then they have the wireless network and they communicate with your bridge. So without the bridge, you cannot do anything with the lights. They're basically use, useless. Now, how you synchronize the game to these lights is through a desktop software app called Hue Sync that you install on your desktop. And that communicates to the Hue bridge, which in return controls the lights. So the Hue Sync app on your gaming PC that is connected to the same Wi-Fi that the bridge is connected, that these lights are connected. So that is the app that picks up your game or your video signal and sends it to Hue Bridge to interpret and basically um, transmit to these lights. When it comes to the lights and how the lights interpret the game footage, well, that is down to the Hue Bridge and the Hue app on your phone. So basically you need both the Hue Sync app, and I'll, I'll start that in a second, but you need both the Sync app on your desktop as well as the Hue Mobile app in order for this to work. Let's start the Hue Sync. 
desktop app. All right. So this is how the interface looks. I choose to use the video option. Uh, it interprets what I want, which is shadows and uh, light cast and such better than the games mode. <clears throat> I think the games mode uh, tries has a different approach into emulating what's on the screen and tries to more show you the, the back, basically cast background lights, which is color lights from the game. While the video kind of interprets the what's on the screen. I don't know exactly what the difference between this, these technologies are, but I know that there is a massive difference between them. So for sim racing, I use the video option with the high. You can use extreme as well. I, I use them, I kind of used the extreme mode for some of the demos that I've made. However, the extreme mode can get, can tire your eyes quite quickly because it's, it's a very snappy reaction to, you know, for example, going under a tree and seeing the, um, the shadow coming along. Well, you might want a bit of delay, but you can play with that as well. Well, you'll notice here, I have a night, um, five lights and such. What this is, this is called uh, an entertainment zone. And you do not set the entertainment zone on the Hue Sync desktop app. So you can't really control this. You can see the, the entertainment zones, but you can't control them here. Now, what is an entertainment zone? Again, I would strongly suggest before you're watching this, this video and going to details, you actually go and watch a proper setup of Hue lights to understand better. I'm, I'm not really good at explaining this too well, and I don't think I should. There are a lot of tutorials on, on Hue lights there, but when you start the, the Hue app, mobile app, this is what you see. This is now connected, this mobile app through the Wi-Fi wi of my home is connected to the Hue bridge. And in the settings, I have something called entertainment areas. And these entertainment area areas is basically you telling Hue bridge how your lights are positioned. So let's take, for example, daylight setup. Now I know this doesn't look very good and actually I'll explain this as well, but let's go to the night mode. So if you look at the night mode, you see lights distributed in a specific way. And if I touch and drag one of the lights, you'll see it blink because that is the light that I'm moving. Yeah, so that's how you identify and that's how you position your lights in your cockpit. Now, the initial reaction would be, well, I'll just position my lights. For example, let's say you have five lights like I do. You might say, well, I'm just gonna position the lights exactly how they're positioned in the cockpit. That being said, this is why these setups are important. I wanna talk a bit about these setups and I'll talk a bit when we get to individual setups. But they are important because without positioning them strategically on the entertainment area, you're not gonna get the same effect as intensive. Okay, so we kind of established the Hue app is connected directly to the Hue bridge, and that's how I see all my lights. That's why I see all my lights, Hue play bars, I don't know, I've named the bulb as well. And that's why I can create room zones and entertainment. I'm not gonna go into room zones and all of that stuff because you don't need to set up any of that for this specific um, game sync. All you need to do is set up your entertainment areas. Then once you set up your entertainment areas, your hue light, uh, sorry, your hue sync application will, will detect them here through Wi-Fi. Right, the only other thing that you need to know about that you need to set up is your game preferences. You need to make sure that you add the games that you want to be controlled manually. Um, I I'd add them manually. You can also add them uh, automatically. But um, once you're once you start the game, you'll see the game in, in this drop down, and uh, you'll be able to to add it. Uh, but you can also au automatically add games to your sync. 
what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go into the game. I'm gonna start the the light sync. Okay, that's a sign that they're all into light sync mode now. I'm gonna go into ACC, and what we're going to do is I'm gonna explain to you the two entertainment areas that I've configured. One being the daylight setup that enables me to cast shadows inside my cockpit when I drive under trees, but also cast proper sun rays when there's a there's a sunset or sunrise or things like this. So we'll go into the cockpit. I'll show you the daylight mode and the configuration and I'll explain why it's configured like that as best as I can. I'm not an expert in hue lights. I don't know exactly why things work in a certain way or why it picks up a certain area of the of the screen, but um, I, I can do my best to, to explain this. Okay, so we'll start ACC. All right, so here I am at Monza because it's a bit of a shady, patchy track with a lot of trees. So we have this set up the way we want to on the daylight, daylight setup and let's see, let's look at the effect. There are just some scattered trees a bit, shadowy there, okay, and over that, and this one as well, okay, so you see the effect. Now, <clears throat> let's talk a bit about what's going on and how am I reflecting that, okay, so if I open the daylight set setup, hopefully, hopefully you can see this, um, you see all my light bulbs are positioned in place in front of the screen quite central this one here that is the side screen quite central as well but it does have the height the the ceiling height okay so first of all let me let me uh, talk a bit about the the positioning in terms of the height so in the in the app in the entertainment area if you tap on one of the um let's say bulbs once it might say tv height what tv height means is that it picks up a generic a general aggregated color theme tone from the center of the screen if you do if you tap again and it's at ceiling height what will happen is it will pick up light from the top of the screen on our on our case is the this black bar here from the from the windscreen and then ground height with the ground height when you type again it will pick up the color theme from here from the, from the dash from the dash area and such now, let's say, so I was on the ground height. If I go to TV height and afterwards save, so that, that light that I've just changed is the one on the side, right? So what it means is it was on ground height and I moved it to TV height. Ground height mean, meaning that it takes the tone of the dashboard and TV height is kind of, it, it, as you can see, it emulates like a green, which is the green in the distance. I go again and tap on it and I go to ceiling height and save you see the light dimmed completely and that's because now it's focusing on the top area and it's trying to pick up the 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 color tone from there but that is completely black so you're not gonna have a color tone there so the reason why most of the lights are at the bottom at the ground height so you see the lights don't change that much because as I mentioned we don't want to change the the mood lighting like to change to the colors that are on the track we, we only want the shadows right so if I now drive into the shadow so what's happening is there is shadow cast on the the, the ground area of the light bulbs basically which is this the dashboard and sorry you can't see much because I have the the screen but there's the this Alcantara material now rather than shining 
it, it gets darker because they're shadow, right? So because of that, the bulbs start blinking to try to replicate that grayish shadow base. Yeah. And if I stop where the shadow is, okay, let me stop here. Yeah, there you go. So it's quite shadowy. The light went darker, thinner. And now let's let's just say that I'm gonna move that light there where it actually is spatially, which is on the side. On the side of the couch, kind of like on the side of the couch, I'm here on the chair and the light is over there, okay? So now I save. One, you can already see that, that the light tone has turned into green because I'm picking up the I'm picking up the color tone from the side window from the ground which is green currently so what happens is if I if I if I drive now let's drive slow you see that you see that light right now is a bright green because on the f on the lower area here there is grass and that grass is quite bright so what happens is now I'm getting this unre unrealistic green tone in my cockpit and on this pillar. So that's the reason why positioning is quite important. The same thing if I go with, if I go and I set it, okay, but let me set it high to TV height. Again, there's a green cast because of what's in the background. Now in the background, there's there's darker green but it's still green and if i move and go over the shadow yeah it does go a bit darker green but it's not because there's shadow on my car it's because what was what was on the distance there and because the the tone of the green on the distance is is darker not because of the tree okay so for example here i'm already in a completely different problem which is there's a wall there and that now casts a the the reflection of the of the green wall to put it like that if i go and change it again to let's say ceiling again what you see on the ceiling now is dark on this on the top section of the of the screen is quite dark so if i move forward you see, it stays dark. It doesn't synchronize with what my car is experiencing going over shadows. It's just picking up the darkness in the in in the background. Okay, I hope that that makes sense. So that's why I actually have. If you only have two lights, right? What what you would do is you'd position them. If you want the same effect, you position them quite central to the screen at the screen at the screen um, end and on the ground floor because what this means is that now you get all of the colors that are happening here on the dash and most of the time that's all you need yeah if you want to go further you can potentially move some of the lights like for example the the, the side lights the the bars you can maybe move them on the side so that you get a bit of the tone of this but fundamentally i i don't think you can properly control at a very granular level where the light is picking up um colors from when i have it central it picks up colors color tone from the dash it on the ground if i have a ground on the edges it just picks up what's on the very edge i've not yet maybe i need to tweak a bit more but i've not yet seen to be able to move a bit uh, forward or inward a tiny bit inward and picking up more of this area i'll give it a try and see and tell you exactly but it would be nice to be able to position let's say one of the let's say the backlight to position it here and I'll give that a try as a test.
to position it here where the door is and where you get reflection and such because when there's dawn and dusk you will there will be scenarios where the light hits this door or the light hits that door but it might not hit the dashboard and in that scenario you know you might not get the the yellow glare in the car if that makes sense I feel that this is a bit too much science for people that might be that might be listening and or looking at this. But yeah, look, there you go. I'm under the bridge now, and the light is off as it should because the entire dashboard is dark. And when the dashboard picks up a bit of light, there you go, the lights start moving. Okay, cool. So I hope that's um, that's super clear. We're gonna move into dark mode now night so let's look at night and how the lights are positioned for night as I mentioned just to show you one more time I know it's ugly and it doesn't make a lot of sense but the majority of the lights and if you have two lights just place them super central on your dashboard for the daylight setup and if you have a race that happens over daylight you can use the daylight setup if you have a race that happens at night you can have a night setup and you can see my night setup here the only challenge with having the setup so the reason why I have two setups is because for night lights and when you're on track at night this the previous setup doesn't work really well because you see some lights you might see some lights appear cast on the on the dash here but very often the light is somewhere outside and it doesn't cast that much here. So the effect, if I leave it like this, the effect is not optimal. So, cause I've tried that and the, the optimal setup is like this. Okay, first of all, if we go nighttime, we'll need to change the selected entertainment area to night. And that should synchronize. Okay, so now we're at night time in at Nurburgring and I will drive to the area which is just around the corner here to the area with lights so you can see exactly what I'm doing now. The one one other thing to mention, I I kept one of the lamps, this one, because Probably when I'm gonna be on a race and stream and, and all that stuff, I want this kind of like static lamp light so that you can see something in the cockpit because if, it, if this is off, then it's extremely dark. You, can, you can't see anything. Okay, so let's find uh, some neon light reflecting. Neon light lamp, whatever it is. Track lamp. Okay, you saw the flashing there, and here's the light, because the stands are there quite close with the light. Yeah, so you can see the lights come up, and if I go to this, there, this is a proper, proper lamp here. Yeah, and you can see it light up. Now, I'll leave it here for a second, and I'll explain the lights a bit, why they're positioned, how they're positioned. The other neat thing that I didn't mention is one that you can edit live. So what that means is, you know, don't take my word and my setup for it, build your own setup and just go on track, go on a spot where you want to reflect the light in a certain way like this under a bulb and then just alter your lights and then you can save and see the effects. So for example, if we take this, what's this? That's the side lamp. Yeah. And let's say I want to put it to ground height. Let's see what the effect of that is. Okay, so that has the exact same effect, which is fine. It's not It's not a big deal. Um, so TV height, it changed a bit, the, the yellow tone. And then ceiling height. Okay. Now, I have that light there because I want to capture what's in the basically what's in the distance here um, on the screen at the height level right at the at the top level 
then I have the central that one I have it still on the side I could potentially move it central and have it reflect what's on the dashboard and put it on the and so basically I know I don't keep the camera properly so I move this from from here yeah which was at the TV height so it was reflecting the center of that side panel and move it in the center of the TV and put it at the ground level and let's see what the effect of that is all right so that stays like that and if we start driving we'll see the light doesn't really tone down as 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 well as expected and you see it kind of like snap in and out and that's because the light is from the bulbs moves quite fast through the dashboard while outside there's a lot more of a transition if you know what I'm referring to so in some areas it fits well but in some it might not okay you see that lit up and this didn't and there was a delay and again it's because the dashboard section hasn't got the light yet cast it on while outside it might be so you can keep it like this as well however it might not be as preferred now I'm gonna put it back because that's what I want there is some sort of light flicker there oh it's from it's from one of these flickering lights okay so I'm gonna keep that as I have it at TV height because that's the best way that works for me the only downside I would say there, there's a green cast because again as I mentioned when you're outside on the on the panel here it reflects the tone color that that basically that it sees but because they're so dimmed compared to, to the, it doesn't look bad it doesn't look bad at all the back ones uh, I've again positioned them the way I've I felt that they give the, the best result and you have one that's um, that's at the TV height and one that's um, ceiling height the right one I don't know it just feels it gives a bit more depth position like this where the light doesn't happen all at once like the front bulbs and the, the back bulbs it's not like boom 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 there's there's a bit of a reaction there's like the the front bulbs that start the light and then a few milliseconds the back ones as well or the back ones start first and then the the front one and it gives kind of like that transition a bit of a transition and i feel that that this setup works the best for that and then you get you see this lonely bulb here in front on the corner of the tv and that is the the passenger seat bulb over there which it is placed TV um, TV height yeah so let me move it a bit tiny bit like this yeah so this is TV height so in the center of the screen and at the edge so what this does right now being positioned here it picks up the color kind of like on this roll cage here and because I have that made makeshift roll cage there I really want it when the light hits that roll cage for the under roll cage to to hit as well so it's basically replicating the color that it sees here so if I drive if you pay attention to that roll cage there you'll see it you see the lights these lights are completely different from those right because it picks up this side well that side is the the roll cage and I, all right so this is I've never seen this ever before in the middle of the filming how unlucky can you be in the middle of this filming I got the internet connection dropped Wi-Fi dropped so now I can't like the lights don't work that that's one of the downside I guess like I guess like one of the downside is if if you're out of internet out of Wi-Fi if you're out of Wi-Fi you're out of luck but I guess you kind of get the idea hopefully you get the idea 
I have this entertainment area, and I guess what uh, to to finish my my thought with this. If I put it to the ceiling, it'll capture this roll cage here a bit better, and the the light will cast a bit better. But as you probably seen in the videos, it looks pretty realistic and. That's one of the things that I really wanted to do was to, to be able to, because I have this side passenger thing for POVs and it looks kind of like 3D, it looks like I have a co actual cockpit, I really wanted to be able to cast light there as well and not just not have that area um, when it's dark outside. So it works really well because it replicates these colors from here. So whenever this gets bright, that gets bright as well. So it looks very epic. All right, so that's kind of it for it. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't finish with the demonstration with the dark mode and such because of the whole internet connection. This is how the night mode looks like. Save it, take a screenshot and save it. They're all either window, window level, sorry, window, uh, TV, because that's what it's called, TV level. Those are TV level. That is ceiling level, ceiling level, and ceiling level. Now you don't need all of this it you can you can survive and do just well in terms of the lighting setup with two of those the bulbs and actually there are bundle starter kit bundles where you can get two bulbs and the bridge for cheaper there are also discounts and such so i'll put the links with to everything in the description below have a look but if you have these two lights and you have them somewhere above you on this position behind the chair somewhere behind the chair and you can mask them properly so that they don't cast the light on the screens then the setup works with um, two lights as well in principle all you need to to remember is for daylight for simulating shadows put the lights to track the dash area because that's where shadows come in and it looks nice for night mode, put the lights outside, potentially on either side, um, on the edge of the screens and either to window level or ceiling level. And that will give you the, the best view of the, the lights passing by and all of this. Stuff. As for me, my next step is to cover these lights here. So I'm probably gonna put some, some of this uh, pipe as roll cage and just to cover those lights because it, it it's not really comfortable it shines in my eyes and all that stuff and and also there's a reflection so for this light you can see the reflection on this screen so yeah that's that's basically the plan next is to hide this and that's it i literally have what i've always pictured in my brain which is light simulation in my cockpit so yeah Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the setup, if I've not done a great job at explaining, ask in the comment section below and um, I'll see you in the next project. We'll see what other crazy things we can, we can come up with.